Hello class, today is the day we are going to be jelly plate printmaking. These are the masterpieces we will be creating. Since it's the fall season, we are going to be creating leaf prints. These are called mono prints. Mono prints means one print. As you can see, we have these really cool looking jelly plates. You will be allowed to touch them a little bit, but you are not allowed to pick them up. You will not want to use your fingernails to touch them either. This tool is called a brayer. It kind of looks like a paint roller. At your table, you may see a tray with this black stuff on it. This is block printing ink. Yes, I said ink which means if this was to get on your clothes, it would stain it. So it's important that you push your sleeves up and not touch your clothes. Up here, I like to call that the river, and down here is the land. You never wanna flood your land. You just wanna water it a little bit by dipping your brayer in the river and then rolling it onto the land. Notice how I pick up the brayer for each roll. It's important to do this so it fully coats every side of the brayer. Make sure you stay away from the river as you are rolling in the land part of the ink tray. Listen to this sound. Did you hear the stickiness? That tells you that you're ready to start rolling onto your jelly plate. Notice that I'm going in different directions to fully coat the jelly plate. You do not want to put too much ink onto the jelly plate or your print will not turn out correctly. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to use these leaves and place them onto the jelly plate. It's very important not to overlap the leaves. We want to give them some space and fully fill our composition. Try to make sure it's somewhat balanced as well. There, that looks much better for mine. I'm ready to make my first print, but first I need to put my name on my paper. If you have not done this, this is such an important part because it's easy to mix your paper up with somebody else's. Now I'm ready to print. When you are printing, you hold down with one hand and rub with the other hand. You never want to pound the paper. Look at that print. Print number one is complete. We're ready to move on to what I like to call the ghost print. Ooh. We are going to remove those leaves and then with a second paper, print again. Notice that I did not add more ink to my jelly plate. Wow, look at that ghost print. What an amazing masterpiece. We need to keep both of these pages. But first, before we get going, I want to show you what it looks like with one leaf. Just a quick recap. I am going to re-ink my jelly plate um, with the brayer. Um, if you need more ink from the river, make sure you dip it and not flood the land. You're going to coat the jelly plate fully and then I'm ready to put my leaf onto the jelly plate for the first print. Ah, that's perfect. Now I'm going to use my paper, which you all should have a colored paper like what I'm using now. We're going to put that onto the jelly plate, holding with one hand and rubbing with the other. And we're going to then remove our paper after we have fully smoothed the paper down into the jelly plate. Nice. First print complete. Remove that leaf and do your ghost print. This is my favorite one. Rub that nice and smooth. And here we go. Here's where the magic happens. Ah, there it is, this beautiful print. We're going to keep both of these papers. Let's move on. 
you should now have your two completely dried prints. Wow, aren't these so neat looking? The supplies today that we'll be using is scissors, a pencil, and some glue. Some of you may be having a hard time seeing where your leaves are on your ghost print. What I would want you to do is trace around the leaf. You may notice that I am floating a little bit on the outside of the leaf instead of drawing right directly on that line. This is going to help me to know exactly where to cut. After you finish tracing around this, you are able to get your scissors out to begin cutting. Make sure that you put your supplies right back into that basket. Now, I'm a professional cutter, so let me give you a few tips for those of you that may find this part to be very difficult. One of my hands are the driver. That means that it is moving the paper to direct the scissors where they need to go. The other hand is my cutting hand. Since I am right-handed, I cut with my right hand. Notice that I try to keep my right hand pretty still while it cuts, and the left hand is doing all the steering, moving the paper around the direction that it needs to go. Hopefully this will help you. Keep in mind, I'm in fast forward mode, so really it took me much longer to cut this out. Please take your time. Once you finish this, we are ready to get glue this onto our picture. But first, if you have any extra pencil markings left behind, I would go ahead and erase those now. Now, the goal here is to lay this on here where it's off centered so you wouldn't lay it directly right where the last print was you want to be able to see those extra lines so see how I can see part of the print from underneath once you have a placement of where you want that print to go you're ready to add glue I like to put glue lines right around the edge of what I'm gluing down notice how thin those lines are Close your glue up and now we're ready to stick this on to our picture. Like I said, I like to make mine a little off-centered because I want to be able to see that first print that we made. Notice that I'm trying to stay within the box as well. We don't want to go outside of that box. Now I'm ready to rub its back. Everybody likes a nice back rub and that's going to help the glue stick really well together. Now, everybody's favorite puffy paint. We're gonna get to use puffy paint. And I wanted to use a blue, so I'm just showing you the different types of things that we have, but everybody will only get to use one bottle. I'm gonna begin by doing three small dots on my scrap paper. Once I have that, I'm going to, whoops, I think I wanna fold that in half, actually. That way it doesn't get on anybody else's paper or my own. So you can trace around your leaf or if you want to go a little off center like I did, I just kind of made some squiggly lines all the way around it into somewhat of a leaf shape. But if you don't like the look of this and you would rather just trace around your leaf, you do what you feel is best. Notice that I'm staying inside of my printing box because later on I will be trimming these off. Awesome. We have completed this project, but we need one more thing, our name. So using a white colored pencil on the bottom corner, we are going to sign our name. Once you have that, we're ready to put this onto the drying rack. So follow along with me. Make sure you put it under your class code, and then you're gonna to wanna to grab a messy mat from the drying rack. These papers are really small and can fall through the holes, so the messy mat's gonna give it some more support. There, and then it goes right up onto the drying rack. Hope you all have fun.